My favorite lockdown killer is the Twister Pass. If I'm here, I want to I be right here. Start working to get the leg out. That's probably um, top two lockdown killers. This one's probably top two or top three. This one's the buttock compressor. The first guy who killed my lockdown with this was a guy named Ryan Gregg. He's a black belt under Higa Machado. He's got a school down in South Bay. He runs Best of the West. He's awesome. He would kill my lockdown with this. It was all about speed. If I, if I, if he could get down here and ball and socket under the buttock area and squeeze, he could sprawl my lockdown on the radio one. The game is letting him get down here. Because usually if you get head and arm here, you want to try the no hand pass. You want to see if you can pull your leg out, try to get to the no hand pass. But if you can't, you can turn the twister pass and start working this. Or you can get down, squeeze under his buttock region, and sprawl your legs free. And at this point, we're going to pass to our right, but he's going to put both his hands on my hips, push me away. Then I'm going to stuff that leg and get to this side, get to knee on the belly with an underhook here. You can control this neck here, hold it up. Just make sure we rule that underhook here. If he could swivel his arm around and grab the underhook, then I really don't have an underhook. There's no control there. We want to trap, we want to pull him up with the underhook and press down with our head and drive our knee into his belly. Now, he can't get that underhook back. He can't pump through. My head's in the way. And then from here, I'm going to base on the mat, shoot my foot all the way through, and take the arm bar all at once. Remember, when we're making that spin, just focus on, once we're nearly got this down, focus on basing and sticking your foot under his shoulder blade, squeezing the knees together, both hands on the wrist, thumb pointed up, squeezing my knees together. All right? Basic stuff. So we're going to start in head and arm. His lockdown's too tight. He's got some ankle sleeves. You can't pull your leg out. Again, if he smells that I want to go down here, he's going to sit up and grab an overhook. If he's got an overhook, I can't get down. I can't get to the level I need to be to break that apart. So, if he smells it out, you've got to fight your way down there. The first move would be bringing the arm that's around his head, keeping his neck down, keeping his head down. Keeping, you can keep your head on the middle of his chest, armpit control, and then we're down here. First pass, lock down apart, both hands on the knee, on the hip, and we're here. Knee on the belly, both our knees are not on the mat. We're here, and then we're here. Don't really worry about where this leg lands. Because this leg's already fucked up anyways. So the, the goal here is just speed. Controlling his wrist. If he tries to corkscrew out, we just keep his wrist up or his thumb pointed up. Control him here. He can corkscrew out if you let him. Go back. But if you have firm control of his wrist, there's no way he can. He needs to twist his wrist this way. We're going to keep his thumb straight up. Even twist it even more the other way. He tries to corkscrew. Maybe one more. Work both sides. Mm -hmm. Starting head and arm, lockdown. No hand pass, not working. Arm looks around the head, forearm in the neck, bicep control. Here's both hands on my hip, stuff the leg, knee on the belly, we're here. Not here, we're balanced here. And then one. Aim so at the very end, squeeze your knees together, and aim your outside foot right into his ribs, right into his shoulder. Here. All right, we're on both sides, guys. Okay, so we're down in the blood top compressor, making sure our head is on the same side as our leg is trapped so we don't get all plotted. We're here, we break, we start trying to pass and he touches my hip. Now you're going to put your head on the same side his arms are on, so they're on this side of his body. 
here, and it's gonna be your post. So I can jump over his legs I like that. and not get caught. Because what happens is if I'm here and I keep my head here and I try and jump, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about his legs catching me and jumping back in the guard. So I get to I'm here, we'll go over it again. Head on the same side as the leg. I break. I start coming, he pushes, I bring my head inside. So I can jump over. Would you, would you also want to put a hand on his knee? He can't catch me really. I'm not even going. And anyway, I have his legs wrapped up. He can't use his legs anyway. Let's go. Get him. I can't imagine anybody surviving a full blast like that to the chest, right? It's hard to pull off though. It takes a lot of energy and you have to be fast with it. Uh, why, why is Eric Seaver having so much success Dennis. with it? Or Dennis Seaver? Well, Dennis Seaver, he has some sort of a, a karate background. The guys who don't get good at it, it's like they didn't start out learning it. Cause it's not like the most practical technique. You know, like Dennis Seaver, I don't know if he was, Shotokan or Kyokushin, do you know? He was some kind of karate shit. But he throws all of his kicks, like even his roundhouse kicks, he throws them karate style. <sighs> I asked Michael Jai White, dude who was in Spawn, I asked him to kick a, a, a bag at Legends. I go, show me your sidekick. I was telling him about your sidekick. And he kicked that motherfucker. And not only did the, the bag fly off the hinge, but it completely broke the chain. Mm. It was fucking crazy. That guy's got a killer sidekick. The hard thing about sidekick is landing it. You know? <sighs> and people, like... people that start doing Muay Thai and start getting ready for MMA and, and uh, they don't, they bypass the whole karate thing as a kid, they're probably less likely to throw a turning sidekick. Yeah, there's another kick too that um, Glave Fitosa likes to do. It's, um, they call it question mark kick. And this is a type one no kick as well. And what this is basically, it's a fake front kick that turns into a roundhouse kick. It starts out like this, and then as you go up, you turn into a roundhouse kick. And Fetosa is like famous for it, to the point where they call it, the K1 guys call it the Brazilian kick. And that's another effective type one no one. So you stand on this, so it comes in like this, and then as it's coming in, it goes over the top like that. So, you think it's this, and you know, you go to block like this, and as you do, it comes over the top. Nice. It's hard to get as much power, obviously, as, you know, like that is where you want to get the most power. It's not as much power, it's more of a slap, but still it hurt. <laughs> One more from this angle. Nice. Let me get one more turning sidekick from this angle, right? Yeah, let me see that. Shit, that's a beautiful angle right there. God damn! Do that, that 360 spinning roundhouse. Haha, <laughs> Jackie Chan, fuck. <laughs> Can you imagine if someone pulls that off? <laughs> it's possible, because you can make it look. You need the guy fucked up, standing up, and he's like, days to set that one up, right? No, he needs to guy. be on Queer Street. Let me catch my breath. Let's take a short commercial break. Come to Ten Planet Riverside. Learn how to choke bitches out. Thank you, Joe.